Hello everyone, Danas here with Action VFX. In this video, we will learn how to do this fire breathing effects inspired by Iron Man 3 in Adobe After Effects. This tutorial will focus on compositing the fire and also a little bit of creating the subsurface skin glow effects. We will be using several Action VFX assets collections such as flamethrowers, fire sparks close, fire lens flare, and some others. Before we begin, our goal is to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So, don't forget to click that subscribe button and be a part of our journey. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, so here is our main composition. Here we have our plate precomp, and this precomp basically contains these two layers, which is the RGB image of the plate, and then the second one is this color mat that I used as a luma mat so I can get a transparent background on my original plate. You can download these files in the description below. Now, Back to the main composition, here we have another layer on the back, which is the background precom layer. Inside is this background image that I rendered out in Unreal Engine and this fog assets from Atmospheric Smoke and Fog Volume 2. As I mentioned, we're just going to focus on the main effects, which is the flamethrower. Okay, so let's start doing our fire. So let's bring our flamethrower asset here. I'm using this 4K version because I'm going to scale up the fire quite big. And here you can see that the duration of our flamethrower is way too long compared to my mouse movement. So we need to retime this fire. So what we want to do is we just want to pre-compose the flamethrower and leave all attributes. And then inside the flamethrower pre-comp, let's bring our plate again. And this time, we're just going to use this as a reference for timing our fire. So we're not going to render it out. So let's change it to guide layer. So now what I want to do is I want to adjust the beginning time of my flamethrower here so it fits with my mouth opening. And then right in the middle when the flamethrower is happening, we want to trim out the back part. And then I want to duplicate the flamethrower and then extend the part that we just trimmed out. And then let's move to the back and we want to basically time the fire so it dissipates as my mouth closes. And then on this duplicate, we want to trim out the beginning part. So here you can see what I'm trying to do. I want to transition the fire from the first layer to the second one. And to get a good transition, we're going to first need to overlap the middle point here. And then I want to bring out the opacity of the layers. And then on the first layer, I want to add keyframe on the middle of the overlap. And then I want to move a few frames forward and fade it out. And then on the second layer, let's add keyframe on the middle of that overlap also. And then we're going to move back and then fade it out. So what's going to happen here is when the fire is transitioning, we will always have a full opaqueness of the fire. Now, if we go back to the main comp, this is what we have. Now, we want to reposition the fire a little bit. One thing that I did is to move the anchor point to around the nozzle part. That way, all the scaling and rotation that I'm doing is preferred there. Okay, so now let's put the fire inside my mouth instead of on top of it. We are going to need a mask of my chick here to put on top of the fire. So let's go to our plate again, and we are going to add mocha, and let's click on the mocha symbol. And now we are in mocha. Here we want to create a spline shape of the side of my lip here. Now let's hit track forward and backward. Now that we have the track data, let's extend the shape of our mask to cover the entire cheek. And then let's scrub through the timeline and we want to make sure that the spline is always following the shape of my mouth. Next, I also want to have a mask shape for my tooth. So let's create another mask on one of my tooth here and then basically do the same process again. Great, so this is what we have. I have a mask of my mouth and then I also have a mask of my tooth so that way the fire will not be going over my tooth and my mouth. So this is looking pretty good. Now close and save. Next, let's create a new solid and name it Mouth Mat. And then we're gonna copy the mocha from the plate to the mat solid. And then let's go to mocha and create a E mask. And we have summoned the mask that we have created before. Next, we want to alpha invert our fire to the mouth mat. And there we go. 
Now we want to adjust the mask a little bit. Make sure to feather it so it doesn't have a sharp edges on the mat. Next, I want to animate the scale of our fire. I want it to be small at the beginning and then scale up as it comes out of my mouth. Next, let's create a null object and name it mouth track. And then on the mocha, we want to pull a tracking data from the mouth shape that we made. So let's click create track data, select the mouth, and then set this to transform and target the mouth tracker and then hit apply. So now we have a general tracking data of the mouth. Let's disable the scale and rotation change. That way we only have the position data. Then we want to parent our fire to that null. And now the fire is moving with the head a little bit. Lastly, I want to add a little bit of energy source from inside my mouth. Basically, this energy source is where the fire comes from. So let's create a solid and set it the same color as the fire. And then let's create a round mask and let's position it to just behind my mouth. And then we are going to feather it pretty big. And then let's parent this to the mouth track null. And then let's duplicate the mouth mat that we had, put it on top of this solid layer. And then once again, we want to alpha invert this layer to the mat. Okay, so now let's bring in the opacity and we want to make this energy source to fade in and fade out around the same time as the fire. And there we go, we have our energy source inside the mouth. And now we are going to add the glow. So let's pre-compose all the stuff that we just made, except for the plate and the background, of course. And then on the pre-comp, we are going to add exposure. And then let's crank it up to 2.5. And then we are going to add our first glow. Let's change the threshold to 25, radius to 250. And then in the glow operation, let's change it to screen and the colors to A and B colors, and the color looping to South Tooth A over B. And then in the color A and B, let's set the white to something like a yellowish orange, and then the color B to something similar, but a bit darker. Great. So now let's duplicate this glow. And then on the duplicate, we are going to change the threshold to 800. And then we are going to add a brand new glow. And then on this one, we're going to change the threshold to 100 and radius to 100. Okay, so we have a nice glow, but it still look a little bit too thick, especially on the side. The reason for this is because the glow is also blurring the alpha channel of the fire. And we want the glow to only affect the RGB channel. So let's slip in solid composite at the beginning of the effect stacks. And then we are going to change the color to black. And now we are losing our plate. So let's turn our fire to screen. And there we go. We have a much better glow. Next, I want to add some glowing effects on my eye. So we are going to duplicate our plate again, and let's put it on top. And then we are going to go to the mocha effects on this duplicate. So inside of mocha, let's delete all the tracks that we have because we are going to create a brand new one and we want to track my eyeballs. So to track this, we are going to use a combination of the automatic track of mocha and the manual tracking because my eye is blinking and it can get a bit difficult. So first I want to create a shape of my eyeballs here. And then on the motion tab, we are going to disable everything except the translation. We just want the position with no scale or rotation. And then we are going to track forward until it stops. And you can see here, the reason it stops is because my eye is closing. So it has no area to track. So to continue, what we want to do is to switch our automatic tracking to manual tracking. Now let's turn on this show planner and we can see our anchor point there. And basically we just want to move our shape manually. Basically whenever the eyes is interrupted, we want to do the tracking manually. But when my eyes is back to being open uninterrupted, we can switch back to automatic tracking and do it automatically. So now once we are done with the tracking my eye, let's disable the show planner here. And we are going to adjust the mask shape so it always follow the corner of my eyelids. And then when my eyes are fully closed, I'm just going to let the shape be and deal with that using opacity later. Next, we are going to do the other eye. So let's disable the view and gear off the current one and basically just create another shape for the other eye and do the exact same process. Okay, so once we are done with tracking both eyes, let's close and save.
In After Effects, let's go to the Mocha effect, and then on the Matte option, we want to make sure that both of our eye mask shape are visible here, and then we want to click Create AE Mask. And there we go, we have successfully bring the mask to After Effects. Next, I want to animate the opacity of the eyes. Basically, whenever my eyes are fully closed, I'm gonna turn off the opacity to zero, and then turn it back to 100 when my eye is opening again. Now let's add glow to this layer. The way I want to do the glow is instead of just a solid glow on the eye socket, I want to have my pupil to glow a little bit more than the rest of my eyes. So we want to get invert, and that way we can see that the color of my eyes is invert. Now the pupil is the brighter one and the white part of my eye is the darker one. And then I want to add curve. And then let's push the black levels here to create an even more contrast. And then I want to add solid composite and change it to black again. And then I want to type unmold on the effects panel and get this unmold preset. So what's happening here is that every dark color in the scene is now fully see-through. And then we are going to add tint and change the white to something like orange yellowish color. Great. Next, we're going to add a glow effects. And then let's change the intensity to five. Perfect. And then let's turn this layer to screen. And then let's blur this out a little bit using Gaussian blur. Now let's make this eye glow fades in and out with the fire. But instead of just animating the opacity, I want to add a little bit more. So let's get tint and change the color to red. So what I want to do is to create this sort of temperature change before it fades out. So it goes from yellow to red and then disappears. So let's animate the tint amount here. So it goes from zero to 100 just before the glow fades out. Now let's create the skin subsurface glow. But before that, we need to track our skin first. We will be using a feature in Mocha Pro called Power Mesh. This feature would allow us to track basically the stretch and warping of a surface. I have made several tutorials covering Power Mesh, even one on how to do the glowing skin effects that we are about to do. So I will not discuss too deep on the tracking process, but you can check out all these tutorials in the description below. Okay, so let's duplicate our plate again and go inside the mocha. For this tutorial, I want to track the surface of my cheek. Let's create a shape here that encompasses the side of my face and also a little bit of the other side of my cheek as well. On this panel, let's turn on everything, including the mesh, and then let's switch to uniform and then generate mesh. Great. So now let's turn off the spline here. And what I want to do is to adjust the individual points of the mesh to make sure that they are following some actual points or border on my face instead of just sitting on some random area. That way we will get an even more accurate tracking. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. So now let's start tracking forwards and then backwards. Awesome, we are getting a really good track. Now let's go to stabilize tab, click add on the frame list. That way this frame becomes the initial frame of our track. And then let's check the mesh warp and then click again. Okay, so now we have stabilized our shot, we have tracked it. Now let's close and save. Next, let's go to the mocha effect here. And we are going to check render and change this to stabilize and warp. So now the plate is stabilized and we can add our effects. So let's pre-compose our warp plate here. Move all attributes. And then inside the cheek pre-comp, let's change our plate to guide layer. So it doesn't get rendered out outside the pre-comp. Now let's create the texture that will dictate our subsurface glow. So let's create a new solid and name it fractal. And then create a mask of where the glow will be and then add fractal noise. Now let's play around with the settings a little bit. And then on the evolution, we are going to hold Alt and click, and we are going to add expression time times to 50. And there we go. Now our fractal noise is animating. Okay, so next I want to simulate a little bit of fins on top of our fractal texture. So let's duplicate our fractal layer. And then on the top one, I want to push the contrast a little bit high and then let's I'll click on the evolution again to disable the animation because we want this texture to be steady. And then I want to add CC factor blur and then increase the amount to 200 and smoothness to nine. So now the fractal is looking less 
like a clumps of tissue and now it's more like blood veins. And then we are going to add Gaussian blur to blur it out a bit and then turn this layer into multiply. So that way we are left with this black splotch that is covering our animated texture. So now let's go back to the main composition. Now we want to destabilize this pre-comp here so it sticks to my face. So let's copy paste the mocha that we had before into this pre-comp and then we are going to change it from stabilize on warp to warp. And there we go. So now the pre-comp is no longer stabilized and it's following my face. And then here, let's change the pre-comp that we just made into classic color dodge. And boom, look at that subsurface glow. It's looking really great. So now let's brighten up our effects here a little bit. So add curve and brighten it up. And then once again, animate the opacity of this pre-comp to make this effect fade out as the fire dissipates. And then at tint, change the color to reddish orange. And we're going to do the whole temperature change again at the end and also at the beginning. Okay, so then what you want to do is to do this process again for other body parts. But again, for the sake of this tutorial, we will just stick to this cheek glow for now. So now we're going to add more light interaction. I already have a practical light here simulating a bright light coming from the fire in front of me, but the lighting is currently still very steady instead of turning on and off with the fire. So we are going to manipulate it a little bit by adding a curve on my plate. So when the fire starts to get big, I want to set a keyframe on my curve here. But then when we go back a few frames and the fire is not there, I want to darken the plate a little bit. And then the same when the fire fades out at the end, I added keyframe just before the fire goes out and then darken it at the end. Awesome. So now let's brighten it up a little bit more. So let's add an adjustment layer and then add curve and let's brighten it up. And then we want to grab our mask and basically create a circular mask around my face and my body and my hand to make it look like the light is coming from the fire. And then of course we want to animate the opacity of the adjustment layer so it fades in and fades out like the fire. And then of course we want the adjustment layer to only affects myself, not the background. So what we want to do is we want to pre-compose this adjustment layer with the plate together. And there we go. So now the adjustment layer is isolated in a separate pre-composition with the plate so it doesn't affect the background. Okay, so the main effects is practically finished. Next, we're gonna pepper in some elements to help pop out the scene a little bit more. So here I added some close-up sparks to simulate something burning off screen. And then I also added these fire embers on my mouth that comes out as I spout the fire out. I parented to the mouth tracker that we created earlier in this tutorial so the ember stays in my mouth. And then I added this small scale smoke plume on the side to really emphasize that my flamethrower is burning something. And then one more thing, I created an adjustment layer and basically create a light interaction on the background just like on my face. So let's pre-compose everything that we have here. And then we are going to create a solid and name it heat map. And then let's add fractal noise. And we are going to contrast it a bit and then scale it down. And then I'll click on the evolution and let's make it move really fast. So add expression time times 2000. And then let's add fast blur to blur the texture a little bit. And then we want to create a large round mask around where the fire was. And then we want to feather it out. And then let's disable the layer and then add a displacement map on our pre comp And we are going to pick the heat map as the reference of this displacement map and then set effects and mask. And boom, here we have our heat distortion. Next, we're going to animate the displacement so it fades in and fades out with the fire. Now, something that we notice here, the displacement map is pulling the edges of our shot. We can fix it by checking the wrap pixel around box. If it still doesn't work, just scale up the shot for one or two pixels. And then finally, we want to make the lighting of our shot to flicker a little bit because fire doesn't have a steady constant lighting. We could play around with another round of curve and adjustment layer, but there's actually an easy way out to do this. We can just use our fire lens flare asset from the fire lens flare collection because it is not only add the fiery atmosphere to the shot, 
but this footage also contains that flickering effects that would really emphasize that we are looking at a fire. So all we have to do is to just fit this into the composition and then turn it to screen. And then let's make this fade in and fade out with the fire as well. And we are done. Of course, on the final shot, I added some camera shake and I added subsurface glow on the neck, forehead, and the hand. Now, once again, if you want to use the assets that I used in this tutorial, you can check out our website at actionvfx.com. At Action VFX, we provide high quality VFX assets for your VFX needs. We have fire, explosions, energy, and many, many others. You can also sign up for our Action VFX subscription starting at the low cost of $14.99 a month. This is the most affordable way to access our library and you can cancel anytime, no contract. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and be a part of our Action VFX community. And let us know in the comment section below what kind of tutorials that you'd like to see next. And see you next time. Bye-bye.